15 things to consider are going least. Let's go. Yes, sir. What's going on, everybody? Lockout Men back again with another podcast video for you today. And in this episode, man, we are going to talk about leasing. Now, I know that's, that's been a topic of conversation since I did to make the call to VL Trucking, a company lease trucking company. Uh, it's a 1099 company and a lot of, lot of feedback some good some bad a lot of feedback came in on that particular video now we now of course i had a few drivers that came on to the podcast to sh share their i mean to share their experience with vl trucking so shout out to will Steele and my man roscoe green make sure you guys check out they both have youtube pages that's talking about uh vl trucking so make sure you go and check them out well in this like i said in this episode I, I think it's a pretty good one because i get a lot of questions about leasing and honestly to be honest with you guys i really don't know if i'm the right person to ask about leasing all right i'm a company driver i've been a company driver for the last six well It'll be six years in uh, December. Next month. Next month. It will be six years. I cannot believe that I've been at, I, I've been in, well, multiple companies, but I've been in the industry for six years. This, this is the longest, uh, this has been the longest time that I actually worked in one particular industry. Multiple companies, by the way. I kind of wish that it wasn't multiple companies. I kind of wish that I did, you know, get my six years in at one particular company. You know what I'm saying? But of course, this is trucking and it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? To say that I'm a job hopper is not. All right. I try to I, I, I spent time and effort with the companies that I was at previously. All right. So it's just some it's just unfortunate that you know some things happen within a company that that makes you change up to go to a different different company whether it's covid season whether it's money whether it's whether it's the dispatchers not treating you right maybe it's the company not treating you right you just have to you just as a truck driver you just have to find which company is good for you but that's that's for me I'm a, I'm a company driver I like I I like I, I like the freedom of of company driverness. All right. Now, now, if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, hit that bell and that all button. That all button lets you know when I drop videos, and that all button lets you know when videos go live. I usually go live with a special guest uh, weekdays around eight o'clock ish, give or take. You know what I'm saying? But um that's that's how i do my lives i do it like that if you want to donate to the channel you can do that you can hook me up by hit me up with the cash app it's in the description below or the coffee app so you can get me some coffee or to make it easy just hit that join button but see the only problem with the join button well no nah, i don't have no problem with the join button i'm good if you guys want to join want to join the lom community three tiers to do so breakfast lunch and dinner hook your boy up with something to eat or some coffee or something like that and as you guys know i am in the same shirt and wonder why i'm in the same shirt is because i'm knocking these videos out at the same time on the same day you know what i'm saying and just just try to just try to knock it all out that's what i do that's what i do you know i don't have time you know, being a truck driver, time is something that you have and don't have. I'm just saying. So let's get into this topic, man. So a lot of drivers out there ask me, they say, lockout, man, yo, what's your thoughts on leasing? And I usually get, when I give my thoughts, it's based on what other people have said. You know, when I talk to other people, you know, I try to get I, I try to, you know, pick their brains on how they feel about leasing. Some like it, 
and some don't. You know what I'm saying? The ones that like it, I guess, are the ones that's making money. You know what I'm saying? They're making money. They get the, you know, they get the freedom of doing whatever they want to do. And then the other ones that don't like it, I guess, is because they got with companies that pretty much fucked them in their leasing. You know what I'm saying? So when you go lease, when you go lease, you really got to read the fine print. You know what I'm saying? Don't let a trucking company talk you into leasing without you doing your due diligence and your homework and your research do that because when you got companies they'll tell you oh well you know we'll give you a dollar five cent a mile and you you can choose your own loads you can refuse your own loads but see what they're not telling you is yeah you can refuse your own loads but if you refuse this little short hop that i got for you then i'm gonna fuck you until you take think about that think about that i think a good leasing leasing company gives you the opportunity to choose your own loads from a load board not the loads that a company would give you you know what i'm saying i i i, I talked to plenty of people that says that they have issues like for example you get a load they give you like three choices they give you one that's like 60 cent a mile, one that's a dollar five cent a mile, and the other one that's that maybe tips at two dollars a mile. But the two dollars a mile is a fucked up run. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta, you know, you, you gotta get with a company and say, hey, let me look at the load board and let me see what they got for me. I came across this article that's talking about leasing, and they said that that they got 15 tips for you guys to consider before you come lease. And I think that's a I think that's a a a a good idea because I came when I came across it I started reading it and I was like, "Oh, okay." I was like, "You know, this this is some good information." You know what I'm saying? I'll link uh I'll link the article that I found this at in the uh in the in the description below. But let's go ahead and um Let's, let's go ahead and uh, talk about a, 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 a few of these and see if this resonates with you guys. But before you, before I do that, but it, it's two things, two things that you guys got to consider uh, that, that you got to consider that you feel that is most important to becoming a lease owner operator. Now, if it's lease owner operator, I think I, I will probably say that is that the company that you lease to, you know, you got to put that in consideration. The main, the maintenance of your truck, because if you get a fucked up truck that breaks down as a lease operator, that's not good. That's not good. You, you, you losing money then more than you make it, especially if your truck is in the shop every fucking week. Or if your truck is in the shop for more than a week. Or if your truck that breaks down constantly, you get finished fixing one thing on that truck and then all of a sudden another thing on that truck is broke. Another thing that you gotta consider is what type of, what year truck that you wanna, that you wanna get because leasing on with a company they're going to try and get you in that brand spanking new 2020, 2021, 2022 joint that got all of the bells and whistles, but you're paying out the ass like thousands of dollars a week. Now, mind you, some leases are a month, but majority of the company leases are during the week. I'm just saying. So you got to make sure that if getting a 2020 truck is good or maybe a 2019 truck with not that many miles on there you also got to consider where the truck is coming from too because if you want to buy a truck some say getting it from buying the truck from a company is better than you know going to buy the truck elsewhere but i'm also noticing a lot of people going to the auction yard now you know what I'm saying, and and getting the truck from the auction, that might be a good that might be a good thing too. 
I'm just saying. In order, in, if you don't put either either one of those things in place, if you don't put either one of them things in place, the company that you lease to and the maintenance of your truck and all like that, without either, without either, you won't be able to run a successful trucking business. Now, as I'm saying, I'm saying business because right now you're running it on your own. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're a solo driver, you're owner operator, and you run it on your own. Now, when you become a company, that's different. But in order to become a company, you gotta be the owner operator to learn about what you need to do to operate the company. In order to become an owner operator, you gotta lease because you gotta get into it to see if it's something that you like. Again, I may not be the best person to ask questions about lease, but I'm hoping that the information that I'm giving to you today is kind of valuable and you can run with it. You know what I'm saying? So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Obviously, 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 obviously you got into this game is because you enjoy driving. You got to enjoy the ride. You got to enjoy it because this type of job in this type of industry puts a lot on your mental. You're by yourself 90% of the time. You're alone with your thoughts 90% of the time. So you got to understand, you got to understand that when you get into this, just know that you gotta like it and you gotta want it in order to be successful at it. You already know what the industry has to offer to you, money. Money, I mean, this is the new millennium. Back, back in the day, the old schoolers got into it because they liked it. It was a lifestyle that they wanted to contend with, but the new jacks and the new millenniites, they want the money, they want the money. This is the this is the only industry. Think about it. This is the only industry where felons, people that don't have a G, I mean that don't have a diploma, and uh, let me see, felons, no diploma, and it, it's something else. But this is the only industry that you can just jump in. All you got to do is have your license, have your license and your DOT card, and you're golden. All you're going to be doing is driving. You know, a lot of people say that this is. This is a no skill job, but actually it is because, you know, even though we drive 90 or 85% of the time, uh, the other times is that we gotta do the paperwork. We gotta make sure that the load is right. We gotta make sure that the load is secure. We gotta make sure that the bri uh, that the tandems is slid right for the weight. We gotta go and scale. We gotta do all this stuff. We gotta contend with safety all the time because just getting in the truck and just driving up and down the street that's not it. You got to pay attention to what's around you. You got to make sure that you got your distance. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, this is not, this is, this is a skillful job. I'm just saying, but be, I mean, but when you're leaving the company that, you know, when, when you, when you driving and you, you want to go owner operator or lease, when you're leaving the company, man, just know that you're going to be leaving some of the benefits. You're going to be leaving the comforts of home. You're going to leave benefits like insurance, health insurance, retirement plans. You're going to investment opportunities, a steady paycheck. <laughs> you're going to be leaving all that behind when you when you jump onto the lease side or to on our operation side. You'll also lose the hand-holding. <laughs> the hand-holding. I think that's probably the reason why some of you guys want to leave anyway is because of the hand-holding. You, you don't want the company to hold your hand anymore. I want to hold your hand. Yeah, I want to hold your hand. Yeah, I want to hold your hand. Let's see, let's see. When you're on your own, you won't have none of that. You won't have none of that. You know what I'm saying? So remember, again, make sure you do your research. I'm just saying, make sure you do your research before you sign on that dotted line because once you go lease, there's a lot of you guys just posting on Facebook. Yeah.
Y'all don't know shit about what to do with it afterwards. I'm just saying. Here are the good things that, you know, that, just because I said all the negative stuff, don't don't let that hold you back for what you want to do, though. You want to you want to better yourself. You want to improve yourself. You want to take the challenge. And if you want to take that challenge, this the opportunity that you will have to do. You will be able to ch choose your own freight. Decide how much money you want to make. And if you're confident in doing that, yo, let's get into this 15. It, it, I, I say it's 15. I probably might just do maybe 5, 10. You know, I, I'll link the rest of it to uh, to the to the description. I'll just go over the ones that I think that probably might resonate with you. Number one, all right? Don't ever, 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 ever purchase a truck from a trucking company that you haul for or that you drive for. Lockout, why not? Well, I'll tell you why. They will offer you a ridiculous low percentage to work for them, all right? Most trucking companies have these lease purchase program set up to bleed you dry and make more money off of you than you're making for yourself. Think about it. Yo, come at least with A, B, C, D, E, F, G company. I would give you a dollar five cent a mile and you will be able to do this, that, and the third. Well, in actuality, in actuality, the company is making more off of that. Let's say that the low pays $10,000, but you're only getting paid a dollar five, I mean, a dollar five cent a mile, man. Who's making, who's making more money here, you or them? Same thing with same thing with percentages. Now, I you know I I I like percentage, I, and the reason why I like percentage for a few reasons. Number one, you definitely can control your your home time. Like say for example, if you do like three loads, you already made your money for that week, and then you can go home a couple of days, whatever, whatever, and then come back. That's why I like percentage. But you the 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 percentage gots to be good as well you know 60 40 70 30 in favor of the driver <laughs> not in favor of the company uh 50 50 you know, none of this none of this uh 80 20 shit in favor of the company i mean moving on always look for a company comprised of owner operators with years of experience why like out why of course with years of experience because with that you'll be talking to drivers that been there done that and that could give you some give you the the information that they have gathered eventually you'll get the idea of which companies these are you know what i'm saying just think about that number three look for a company that allows you to pick your freight and load choices i was just talking about that I was just talking about that in the earlier in this podcast, man. If you let a company choose your loads, then you're you're you pretty much going to be fucked because they're going to give you like a choice of uh they're going to give you a choice. Some of which which is not good. But if you get a chance to choose your own loads, this would give you maximum flexibility in running your business this is your this truck is your business you see what i'm saying so don't let the company choose your load you choose your load and where you want to go pause for a minute one of the biggest plus of being an owner operates uh, owner operator though the one of the biggest plus is taking time off without you ever being hassled so company a b c and g I'm I'm about to go home. Oh well, it won't, no 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 you you no. I'm about to go home. I'm about to take my time off at home. I'll I'll get back with you when I come back on. If you can't do this, stay with your with your current company. If you can't if you can't take time off whenever you want to take time off and you you're owner operator, stay company. 
I'm just saying. Becoming an owner operator, right? When you become an owner operator, when you become an owner operator leased to a company, there are one there is one important thing to remember. The freight is endless and the companies are always in need of drivers to haul them. Remember that. There's companies that's all, and this is the same thing goes for company drivers. There's companies that's always hiring. You just got to make sure if that company is right for you. Don't feel obligated to accept a, a, a low from a broker or agent who's claiming all hell will break loose if you don't take it. Well, well, you know, we, we really need this load to be moved and, 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 and you the only one to get it. Okay, well, if you need this load to be moved and I don't want to move it because of how much you charging, then I'm gonna move on to the next person, bruh. They need, they, they need your truck. Make sure the load that, I mean, make sure the load can be hauled on your schedule, your schedule. If not, demand to be compensated for the extra hassle. Make sure, because a lot of these brokers and agents, they are gonna try and lowball you, but if, if they really need that load to be hauled, trust me, they're gonna pay. They're gonna pay. Reputable agents who are established don't need you and, could, and couldn't care less if you call them. There are agents who have hauling contracts with companies that were Will put you in a position that you could. Reputable agents who are established, right? There are agents who have hauling contracts with companies where you can be able to get in on them that will probably put you in a position where you could retire in five years the conference the competition for that is fierce though drivers fight for those runs that guild with guild and expertise right so don't be surprised you can't get your foot in the door when it comes to these lucrative loads you got to start off small. You got to start at the bottom. Always know that you got to start at the bottom and then you got to grind your way to the top where you got to show and prove. This like Amazon, they're not just going to bring any and everybody on. Amazon wants the best driver for their loads. I'm going to try and get somebody from Amazon to distinctly talk about Amazon freight. All right, so check it out. You know, when becoming an owner operator, you also got to know that that some brokers and agents, right? They're like salesmen. They work too, right? They they work to get uh they work to get the load. They basically do the same thing you doing if you on a load board picking out your own load. But what they're doing, they're on the same load board picking out that load. You know what I'm saying? They're counting they're 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 courting new customers every day they're blind calling people every day they're calling people they're making they're, they're trying to get their business so they could start a rep so they can get a reputation they need good drivers like the pope need the catholics yeah he actually said that the pope need catholics okay but companies they do need good drivers so if you're a good driver and want to prove to them you gotta go ahead and and do it that way all right all right we we, we coming we, we coming close to the end man we, we coming close to the end but i i know this is some i'm hoping that you stand to the end because this this is some good ass tips bro this is some good ass tips for you you know what i'm saying yo when you drive and you own your own truck you want to keep your maintenance and your overhead down if, if your maintenance is down and your overhead is down, that means more money in your pocket. The best way to do this is to drive slowly and carefully. Slowly and carefully. Well, not too slow because, you know, your, your truck probably might be open to like 85 miles an hour, but still drive carefully though you're no longer trying to drive the most miles you can in a day for a fixed rate remember that you already making the money if the load is paying uh x amount of dollars 
You already know how you make. Uh, you already know how much money you're making. You're not. You you're not running now. You're not driving three thousand miles, three thousand miles every day, on 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 a rate that's that probably gets you thirty eight cent a mile. You're not doing that no more. You're not doing that no more. You 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 finding lows that pays well, and once you find it, in turn, you could drive the truck a little bit more maybe five miles less than what you was doing five miles ago think about that think about that think about that man the biggest thing that i think that you guys should know while getting into owner operations know your truck you you got to know how to maintain your equipment trucks break down maybe some of the simplest things that you can learn how to fix you know, that, that saves you a lot of money. That saves you a lot of time from calling road service to come and change a light bulb or come and change a windshield wiper or something like that or or come and change an air hose or something like that. Learn learn to maintain your equipment. Learn, learn your equipment. I mean, I've been in this truck for six years and I always said that, I always said that, yo, this is the company's truck. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I drive it like my own, but this is the company's truck. They're not paying me to get on my back and fix whatever, whatever that's broke. They they say to call road service and they'll send somebody out here to fix it. All right. But if it's my truck, then yeah, I'm going to have to get down and get dirty and, and, and start to fix it. Learn to maintain your equipment. When you do own your truck and your truck do break down, make sure and you decide to take it to a shop to get it fixed, make sure you get an estimate on that motherfucker. Because if you don't, they're going to try and run up in you. They're going to try and run up in you. Make sure you get an estimate. If that dude said, well, the estimated cost is going to be about ten thousand dollars. Then that's how much you're going to pay. Once you get an estimate, make sure you make sure you you get it in writing. You know what I'm saying? On the estimate itself, that any diversion from that detail repairs should be brought to your attention, and no work is authorized unless you first inform me or you that's leasing or owner operation. Uh, the cost of of the truck, it must be in writing and you have to approve it. Last but not least, uh, I want to I want to jump in before I get on up out of here. And thank you. Thank you guys for watching this long. If you like content like this, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that like button. This is some good shit. I'm telling you, I, I, I was not the person to ask this question, but I went to work for you guys to get this information. So hit that damn like button. If it's a hundred people in here, hit that like button and make sure it's come up. It does help the channel. And for people that's looking for information like this, it helps me to get to them. Help me help you help other people. That's what's up. Help me help you help other people people do it again help me help you help other people one more time help me help you help other people that's what's up y'all the last thing i want to talk about business credit all right now some of you guys that's coming into owner operations your credit is messed up let's let's be real let's be real 90 percent of you guys your credit is messed up. My credit is messed up. My my credit been messed up for years. I, I never I never took my credit serious. I got three bankruptcies. I got a bankruptcy now. And I got and I got credit cards now. I, I may have too many damn credit cards. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? I always had to have some fucking type of credit. But but check this out though. For you guys that's coming into this game, uh, I always say at least, now I'm talking to the company drivers, the people that's interested in the company. I always say, 
when you get put on with a company, make sure you have at least one credit card. If you don't have good credit, you can always get the bad credit credit cards. They will at least put about $300 to $500 on your credit card. Make sure you have that because let's say, for example, you get put on with a company, they bring you at this company, and then all of a sudden the marriage the marriage ends in divorce before y'all even make it to the fucking honeymoon. They're they, they gonna, they gonna, they gonna, they gonna put you out. And once they put you out, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't care how you're gonna get home. They don't care whatever you do. Just as long as you out of their fucking truck and 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 out of, and out, and off their property, they would literally have somebody to come and escort you off the property if if the marriage is ending ending a divorce. I'm just saying. So with that said, you got your credit card. You're able to rent a car and go home. Because a lot of these rental places, they're not taking cash deposits. They're not taking debit cards. It's credit cards. And they got it. And you got to at least have about two hundred dollars on said credit card. Make sure you get a credit card with at least three or five hundred dollars on it. And then make sure you keep it. Don't use company drivers don't use that credit card for nothing else you can use that credit card to start building your credit start building your credit with that one bad credit card because that bad credit card is going to report to all three uh all three credit agencies what's that trans experian and something else. I don't know what it is. I, I I can't keep up with that shit. But if you going into owner operations, then yeah, you're gonna have to keep up with that shit. All right. You definitely want to pull a credit report to see where some of the issues that you could probably fight get you know taken off and all like that. Why in the midst in the midst of going like leasing, that's when you take the time to start getting your credit and all that other shit together. Because when you want to buy a truck and and get a truck for a good price your credit gonna have to be good but when you're on an operator though and and a lease op you're gonna you you're gonna want to pay with a credit card you you're not gonna have money out of your pocket so if you if you do have good credit and you get a business credit or something like that say if the shop doesn't take credit cards be leery if you go to a shop and they say yo we don't take credit cards we only take cash Mm. Some shops don't take credit cards for various reasons, though. But you still got to be some shops don't take credit cards for various reasons. And you got to be. Mm. You ain't got the answers. I, you ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers, Sway. Huh. You don't take credit cards, you say. Well, why you don't? Maybe it's because the percentage is too high or the interest rate is too high or whatever the case. But they might not take credit cards. But it's in your best interest, though, if you're an owner operator, to pay with one. Settling disputes, getting your money back if there's a problem is easier when using a credit card than using cash. Because if you pay cash already and some, you take that truck off the off the off uh, from the shop and that motherfucker breaks down again and it's because they didn't fit something right you can't you you in order to get your money back you got to go to small claims court and go through all that shit but when you got a credit card when you got a credit card credit card is simple call up the company and say hey i got a problem with said company they didn't do something right yada 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 the credit card could cut that shit off quick. All right. Well, there's plenty more where this come from, but I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, link the uh, the article in the in the description below so that you guys can uh, so that you guys can watch it and all like that. Until next time, man. Yo, this is Lockout Man, and this is the Lockout Man podcast show. I hope this information for leasing works out for you because like i said a lot of people had came at me especially after i did that vl trucking uh 
trucking interview video uh, about you know the lease company and all like that if you like content like this and more don't forget to like you know what to do don't forget to subscribe comment share hit that bell and that all button and if you want to support the channel you can do you can donate to the channel by the coffee app or the cash app give me some coffee somebody this Give me something to drink, man. This was the shit, and you can't tell me that this wasn't, man. Get a brother something to drink. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I, I think I should get a, I should get a round of applause for that. Give me something to drink. You know what I'm saying? So, if you guys, again, if y'all stayed this long, I really do appreciate it, and all like that. It really does help the algorithm, algorithm of YouTube of youtube but anyway anyway don't forget to come back what i mean don't forget to come back for another episode of the lockout men podcast show thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for listening this is lockout men and i will see you in the next video peace searching 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 and searching and searching